A young man speeds down the street, standing atop a steam wheel. Somehow, he's managed to turn the machine on without wearing control specs. Without them, he'll likely crash any second now. Drat. The second pillar of power. More spectacular acts await. And more importantly, higher admission prices. Or if you believe certain theories out there, even more bloodthirsty vicious. It's not exactly blood or beer around here right now like when we lit the first pillar, is it? No vicious nearby for days. Hmm. We will only continue to grow from here. We get bigger, we get better!
You've got nothing better to do today, right? How are my second-rate performers handling things out there, Amy? Swimmingly. I thank you for sending them with me. It seems every step closer to the bridge offers a new obstacle. Yet things have calmed down around the circus. Curious. Yes. How is it that a site full of freaks is the safest, maybe even the sanest, place in town? And the maddening began mere moments after lighting the pillar of power. Pure coincidence? Um, yes? Surely you don't suspect I have some hand in this chaos? That would involve actually thinking about you, Uncle. Which is something I actively try not to do. Knowing when to strike could prove the key to victory.
Don't forget to buy some popcorn!
do hope you're feeling crafty. The London City Circus, how it all began. <laughs> An old man hunches over and stares at the ground. He looks like he hasn't eaten in days. He repeatedly mumbles something none of us can make out, though we're relatively certain he is asking for money. We made the right choice. See that goal number? We need to choose a performer whose enjoyment rating can best that sum after we spin the wheel. Then we can put all we've earned on the line to try again. We won! But do we think we can do it again? We won! But do we think we can do it again? Good news for you, Uncle. Your Circus Electric story is still happening. Oh? Is your editor growing impatient? My editor is dead. Killed by the entertainment reviewer. Ivan did that? How... terrible. And after such a good review for the premiere. Yes, please go hug him if you see him at the pub. That would end in one hell of a story, I'm sure. But for now, I need an interview. Several, actually. My single story has morphed into an ongoing feature. You don't say. How did you get your foot in the door on running a circus? You know I know your story, but I could use some quotes, so people believe how dumb you are. <laughs> how flattering. I suppose the beginning was in 1866. I was 15, living in Coventry, with no idea what to do with my life. But then he came along. P.T. Barnum. The Prince of Humbugs himself, yes. By chance our paths crossed as Barnum explored the city. All I could think to say was a bit of history I'm sure he already knew. Lady Godiva once rode naked down this very street. He laughed and said he could use a good tour guide. I spent the next few hours in his company. Before we parted, he said to look him up if ever I was in America. Maybe he could return the favor. In 1869, you sought P.T. Barnum in America. I don't think Barnum ever expected me to hold him to his promise of a favor in America. But three years later, I most certainly did. I left England for the land of the free and the home of the brave. It only took about two months, and all but two of my dollars, to find Barnum, but I did. And he remembered me. 
He was so amused that I went so far to take him up on his offer. He offered me a job to help out his protege. Assistant to his assistant. It was all I could have hoped for. I thank his kind soul to this day. How did you get your foot in the door on running a circus? You know I know your story, but I could use some quotes so people believe how dumb you are. <laughs> how flattering. I suppose the beginning was in 1866. I was 15, living in Coventry, with no idea what to do with my life. But then he came along. P.T. Barnum. The Prince of Humbugs himself, yes. By chance, our paths crossed as Barnum explored the city. All I could think to say was a bit of history I'm sure he already knew. Lady Godiva once rode naked down this very street. He laughed and said he could use a good tour guide. I spent the next few hours in his company. Before we parted, he said to look him up if ever I was in America. Maybe he could return the favor. Tell me about working for Barnum's protege, Eli Edwards, who now runs the world's most powerful corporation. Oh, always something to prove with Eli Edwards. Early on, we got along very well, until Barnum started asking for my help over his. I think Eli started feeling jealous, devalued even. Didn't help that Barnum actually started referring to me, not Eli, as his protege by the time of our first traveling circus performance in 71. And how do you feel about what Eli has become? Ha! I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll get back to you on that one. Working for P.T. Barnum in his prime must have been exciting. And he actually preferred you to Eli Edwards as his top protege? Rather unbelievable, considering Eli essentially runs the world today, is it not? I'll let you answer your own question in a future interview. Right now, Uncle Randy, I've had about all I can stand of you. Me too. Harder for me to escape myself, though. <laughs>